Hello, boys and girls. Today we're going to be talking about Captain Kurva QT, which is my uh, Spectral Shield Throw uh, Avenger of the previous Spectral Shield Throw character that we talked about. Uh, it was a physical version of the build. Unfortunately, it does have some limitations. It is super duper tanky. And if you've seen the diary, it does pretty good damage. But in terms of how much you can do with just physical gear, there isn't too much. I mean, you can get like an Impale Watcher's Eye, get vulnerability, all of those things benefit you. But uh, other than scaling defense, you can't do too much. And that's why we fed out a cold conversion version uh, inspired very heavily by Pimilage and just sort of adjusted it for uh, hardcore. It's a significantly more expensive build than the previous one, but it's still not too expensive. Uh, some of the more notable things and pretty much the only notable thing I can think of that is expensive is the conversion uh, Watcher's Eye, Hatred Conversion Watcher's Eye. Uh, but you don't necessarily have to use it. You can use Frimsaro gloves and then you've still got 90% conversion and that just allows you to scale through many different things. And again, keep in mind that if you are, this is a hardcore build, but if you are playing on softcore, there's a lot of things that you can tweak. Uh, you can use an Aziris Promise, for instance, which already will be a significant damage boost and it'll switch up your character a lot. Without further ado, let's get into the gear setup that I landed on. The weapon, you've got a bunch of different choices, but I ended up going with Ewer's Mirage. It is slightly better than uh, a princess if you have the damage penetrates 10% elemental resistances implicit from a vol orb. Uh, the princess is really good, but unfortunately has a downside as uh, you do take extra damage from ghosts and skeletons and on hardcore I couldn't quite afford that. Uh, obviously the one extra chain is pretty big because that's 10% more damage for us. And in general, in my opinion, it did make a pretty big difference uh, when clearing. Um, we also have the weapon elemental damage that helps a lot or elemental damage with attack skills. Uh, that has made a pretty big difference because something that I definitely noticed with this build that I didn't have a problem at all with the physical version was that, yeah, we do a ton of damage, um, but in terms of AOE, we do worse. Uh, we have two less chains if you don't use the Ewers Mirage, uh, one if you do. For our helmet, you use a Spectral Shield Throw Fires, three additional shard, shard projectiles, uh, Enchanted Helmet. Pretty much the rest of the stats don't really matter. I do suggest that you use a Pristine Fossil with a Frigid Fossil and try and get a high HP with minus Cold Resistance Helmet. Nothing particularly special on the one that you're seeing from me. I did uh, try to get an open prefix for the additional uh, pierce. I thought it was pretty helpful, but this was also with me planning to not use a pierce gem. I ended up thinking that it was worth it. You don't. You can use either a three additional shards or five. It doesn't actually make a difference with the chain gem, uh, chain jewel. It still uh, gives you one additional projectile no matter what. You don't have to 100% get it. It's actually not that big of a deal, but if you want that little bit of extra clear speed and comfort, go for it. But if it's too expensive, I really wouldn't stress over it too much. Um, my shield, nothing too special. A 2560 shield. Uh, people are getting 3k shields, 3.1k shields. You can craft them with deafening uh, dread essences. You can craft them with dense fossils. Uh, I prefer the dense fossil uh, method as the other one on hardcore at least is super duper expensive and has a pretty low probability of actually getting something good. <laughs> so yeah, my shield's nothing super special. Wanted to exalt it, but uh, ended up not getting the gear. The amulet, I highly recommend that you get a shaper amulet with gain... Uh, percent of physical damage is extra cold damage that's pretty much the main thing that we want we do scale a lot with that extra damage and uh elemental damage with attacks so if you can get that as well that would be big obviously physical damage is always big if you can get uh cold damage that's also super helpful it just depends on what you've got available harker trade is pretty dead so i didn't have too many options uh, you will need about 400 accuracy to be accuracy capped with a level 2 precision. All of this is kind of 
You can move it around. It really depends on your mana. If you've got extra mana on gear, if uh, you have to level your precision, if you're using an enhance, I didn't have to do any of those things. And I actually ended up having quite a bit of mana. The gloves are pretty important, but also customizable. So something that I mentioned previously, the Watcher's Eye uh, with Hatred Conversion is pretty much your end game setup. If you can't get it for the conversion, get the 90% with the Hrim Sorrows. Otherwise, if you do have the Watcher's Eye, uh, try and get gloves, try and get some accuracy. You can always get that the same way you can get it on rings or on the amulet. Uh, and just, yeah, elemental damage. I landed on 50% increased damage with hits against uh, chilled enemies with really overcapped my <laughs> cold resistance. You can get a pair where you've got an open prefix and you can craft uh, physical damage converted to cold. Do keep in mind that if your watcher's eye is low rolled, then uh, you're probably going to have to divine it. Mine's, uh, I think I have like 101 conversion, but you can end up in a situation where uh, with a crappy Watcher's Eye, you're going to need this to be uh, maxed out. So the Nomad is pretty much something that you can't really replace. I do recommend corrupting it if you've got the money to do it. Global physical damage, projectile attack damage, uh, super helpful. The 25 all res, super duper helpful. Uh, flash charges gain. I mean, what doesn't this belt have? A good implicit, so try and corrupt it, but you don't have to. Don't worry about it too much. Boots, get movement speed, get a stun in, stun uh, resistance enchant. It really makes a big difference. I had it on the first character. I didn't have it on the second one. Try and get that enchant, get movement speed, get resistances, get life. Try and get strength on everything that you can. Uh, that a little bit of extra life always definitely helps. As for our chest piece, I never really switched it out. I do have a sacrificial garb because uh, six links are super easy to acquire. It's super easy to get the colors. The armor and evasion are great. Uh, and try and craft it with a uh, serrated, pristine uh, fossil in a, in a pot potent resonator. That way you can get uh, maim, which is 15% more damage because we gain the physical damage. Uh, you can get life, a lot of life. Uh, mine doesn't have a whole lot, <laughs> but uh, you can get it. Obviously, resistance is super useful. You can also get minus mana cost. You can run into some mana problems. So something to keep in mind that if you do have the uh, minus mana cost from the serrated fossil, that could be helpful as well. That's something that you can also get on the rings if you've got an open prefix. But I personally didn't find it to be an issue at all once I hit about level 90. But again, that depends on your mana. It depends on your precision levels, how you customize your gear. You got to move some things around and figure it out. As for my gem setup, it is drastically different from the Impale character. Uh, it is Spectral Shield Throw, Cold Penetration, Vicious Projectiles, Energy Leech Support, Elemental Damage with Attack Skills and Pierce. This Pierce gets switched out for Hypothermia. Uh, the footage that you're seeing is with my gems being somewhat leveled, but not really being level 20. A lot of them are 16, 17, 18, because uh, I was moving around uh, quite a bit when it came to those. And yeah, you want to be leveling a hypothermia. You want to be using that for single target. Pierce definitely helps a lot with clearing. Uh, a lot of people ask, why do we use energy leech support? The reason for that is because you can get a five second leech instance out of this. And uh, because we use Blood Rage and Blood Rage drains your energy shield based off of 4% of your maximum life. So if you've hit in the last five seconds, you're pretty much always leeching and it's just a large damage multiplier. We've got your classic shield charge, endurance charge and melee stun support, fortify and faster attacks. This gives us endurance charges. It gives us fortify. It's great for mobility. Try and get quality on your shield charge as it is movement speed now. It's really ridiculous. Obviously, level it as much as possible. Uh, my gems aren't fully leveled, but they didn't make much of a difference anyway. It's super smooth. It's super fast. In my weapon, I have Frost Bomb, Blood Rage, Precision. This is customizable with your uh, second setup, which is Hatred, Flesh and Stone, Leap Slam and Ancestral Bond, so you can just move these gems around freely. It really depends what you've got uh, on your weapon. If you end up with a corrupted weapon, whatever, uh, just try and make it as comfortable for you as possible. If you've got mana problems, maybe you want to get rid of Leap Slam, maybe have it on a weapon swap to get over gaps and use Enlighten instead. Uh, I didn't find that necessary, so I've just got a loose Leap Slam to get over stuff. And Frost Bomb doesn't need to be leveled at all. We're only using it for the cold exposure. So if you don't have enough Int, Keep leveling it, don't worry. 
The only int that you will need, however, is for our Caspian Damage Taken, which is Enfeeble, Molten Shell, Caspian Damage Taken, and Increase Duration. Enfeeble is great. Uh, try and get it uh, qualityed up as much as possible. Uh, Caspian Damage Taken, mine is at level 44. So try and keep everything below it, otherwise it's useless. Uh, the duration on the Molten Shell isn't actually that big of a deal. I thought mine had duration, apparently it doesn't, uh, but it does help. It does prevent your uh, cooldown recovery, so maybe if you want it out more frequently, then don't get that. And then our last setup is Volt Grace, increased duration on Vol Molten Shell. Uh, Vol Molten Shell is crazy, Volt Grace is crazy. Both are pretty much free and the increased duration just extends them. I think I have, yeah, a 17 second Vol Molten Shell that with my 25,000 armor uh, is just a lot of uh, essentially flat life. Pair that up with a 34% just to dodge spells and attack hits from the Vol Grace makes us super duper tanky. That with like 50% block, you know, the armor you previously mentioned, Taste of Hate. 10,000 evasion, it, yeah, you can really beef yourself up if you're maybe fighting a particularly nasty legion or get ambushed by uh, a bunch of legion guys. And that brings us over to the flasks, uh, divine life flask of heat, like I mentioned before, to prevent getting stun locked and stun frozen, we use soul of the brine king pantheon. Uh, so you only really need to use this on boxes. I pretty much never get frozen outside of that. And if I do, it's for an unnoticeable amount of time. But if if you do get frozen, you've always got that possibility. You can use this. Got a Jade Flask of Warding. Yeah, Warding Flask. I'm gonna use it. Taste of Hate. Uh, super duper useful. Like I mentioned previously, the physical damage is extra cold. Uh, damage is just the best. I didn't give mine to be better percent, but you want to get 20%. Okay, I spent like 3x trying to get this shit. I couldn't do it. Don't judge me. Uh, granted, iron, uh, granted Flask of Staunching, not an iron skin, because uh, we do need the bleed as we are using Taste of Hate, so we've got one less suffix. Uh, we drop a little bit of armor, but honestly, the flat defense from the Taste of Hate totally makes up for it, and I wouldn't worry about it. And then an Alchemist Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline. So this is something that's super customizable, especially if you're softcore or if you just want to do a lot of damage and clear slower. Uh, if you don't really mind the movement speed, which you shouldn't too much considering the shield charge. Maybe you want to use Leap Slam, whatever, totally up to you. Uh, a series Promise will do a lot of damage as it uh, does scale twice on our uh, extra chaos. So that's like at least 30% multiplier if you're looking for that extra little bit of spice. And since we talked a little bit about the Pantheon, yeah, Soul of the Brain King, totally go for that. And then Soul of Ralakesh, uh, I I sometimes don't hit my flasks and I'm bleeding and I die or almost die. Um, and also, if you get Drag the Apex Hunter, you cannot be blinded and you cannot be maimed. Cannot be blinded does make a pretty big difference as we don't use RT or anything like that. We are using uh, elemental overload. So that's something that uh, you know we gotta we gotta be able to hit. As for the skill tree, um, it's pretty much your typical conversion skill tree with elements of uh, shield nodes. You have to pick up Winter Spirit. Makes a pretty big difference. The Divide and Conquer Jewel. Uh, that, by the way, doesn't show in the damage in POB, uh, so we do get extra 40% if that's something you're worried about. Uh, we get down below the dual list. I did opt to go for Soul of Steel and Iron Grip, which I know some builds don't, but I found it super useful, even with the minimal amounts of strength that I've got. If you can gear your character up even better, uh, Iron Grip would be fantastic, and Soul of Steel is just tremendous amounts of armor, and the max resistances helps a lot because elemental damage is pretty much the only thing that can kill us. I know some builds also did not go uh, over to the Marauder, but I value armor very highly. Uh, Molten Shell is just absolutely ridiculous. And then we very awkwardly path all the way to Scion and then up to Elemental Overload. It It's a long journey. But it's absolutely worth it. You can get into discipline and training over at Templar. You can get devotion. 
Uh, Devotion is pretty good because we do have the increased effect of non curse auras from your skills, so that helps out with our hatred. It's like a multiplier. This build pretty much only kicks in once you've got the gear. Once you can convert, you know, 90%, 100%. Uh, of your damage and before that it more does more than enough damage when I was playing physical even with the minimal investments that I've made You know, I pretty much I only started feeling like I needed more damage when I got into like your 12s plus So yeah with this guy we pretty effortlessly with the wrong gem setup have killed a uh, Hydra so that was pretty cool. I didn't really have much of a reason to do uh, any other things if you're looking for like a, some sort of damage measure. There's also a variant when you can go acrobatics and phase acrobatics. Overall for softcore, again, check out uh, Pimlet's, uh guide in the description. I do find acrobatics and phase acrobatics to be more efficient, but it's not better. It's just enough to make sense. And in that sort of variant, you wouldn't use uh, all, this, all this armor. That we're getting and there's a lot less pressure on it as acrobatics does cut your armor in half which is a lot and speaking of leveling yeah like i mentioned use the physical version and you can level all the way from level 12 i didn't have any issues i actually found the build to be quite strong for leveling i only used three different shields a uh, a day titicious span and a random 900 armor shield that i equipped at like level 50. uh you can replace them with better shields along the way if you somehow feel like you're lacking in some department, but I didn't find it necessary at all. It was great. And I, then I just sat around in blood aqueducts all the way until I could re equip the rest of my gear. Kill uh, everybody. For bandits. Don't don't help Alira. That, that shit, you, you don't want to do that shit. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this and I hope you found it useful. Spectral shield throw is pretty cool. Yeah.